Now for this video today, we're going to be going over the Enneagrams 8, 9, and 1. These are the guttural, the gut types. The types that have a... How would we call this? A body sensor, the gut of a body is where the Enneagram 8, 9, and 1 get their power from. The Enneagram 8 is a really strong challenger amongst the three. The Enneagram 9 is more of the helper of the three, but at the same time will stand up for itself very fiercely if the Enneagram 9 feels the need to. And then we also have the Enneagram 1. The Enneagram 1 is the one that really goes out of their way to make sure that the necessities and things required growing up were always done for mother, father, or whoever the caretaker was. At the same time, disregarding who they were. Because of that, there's a lot of anger and resentment underneath the actions and thoughts of the Enneagram 1. The Enneagram 8 will just tell you straight up that they're upset and they might get really intense. The Enneagram 9 depends on the subject matter but it can get pretty brutal. Point being, the center of this is anger from the gut, a feeling of intensity. It doesn't have to be bad. These numbers are driven by an intensity, a need to correct and go against what they feel is wrong and to sometimes, or a lot of the time, stand up for those they feel are worthy of being stood up for. Whether that be family, friends, or colleagues, or individuals who are misrepresented or underrepresented in society. These three numbers are known to be helpers and protectors of those they feel and deem worthy. But at the same time comes a reluctance to look at the insecurity, the vulnerability, the weaknesses of the self because the gut, the internal strength part sometimes doesn't let us reflect on that because we sometimes have difficulty viewing ourselves as weak or as needing something or needing a lot of something. So it's okay. It's really strong. A lot of Enneagram 8s, 9s, and 1s have grown up in families where they really have had to bust their chops and really have had to sometimes, or a lot of the time, overwork themselves. And my hat goes off to each and every person watching who's an Enneagram 8, 9, or 1. After studying these Enneagram numbers and having many close family and friends and colleagues who are Enneagram 8s, 9s, and 1s, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with being these numbers. Sometimes nobody else is going to be there to help them out and they have to take on the bull by the horns by themselves sometimes. But sometimes they just feel like they do. And in reality, they actually have more help than they'd like to think or than they perhaps know. And that's because of not knowing the vulnerability of the self. We have to know the pros, but we also have to know the cons. We have to know our strengths, we have to know our weaknesses, and we have to aim to improve upon both of them. We have to go to that negative headspace and be like, man, what do I need? I need to stand up for myself. I can't handle it right now. And I need to say that this is too much for me. That's really hard sometimes. And that's exactly what this video is for, for us to learn our strengths and weaknesses and how to improve as an individual so we can be the best us that we can be. So if you are an Enneagram 8, 9, or 1, listen closely. Have an open heart and an open mind. Let's take this ride together. The Enneagram One. Some main themes of the Enneagram would include likes to do things correctly and to high standards. Enneagram Ones are known to be sticklers for rules and pay close attention to detail. They also avoid making mistakes. To others, they appear perfectionistic, responsible, and exact. Ones are typically sticklers for rules and details and get frustrated when things don't live up to their very high standards at work, in relationships, or in their day-to-day -day lives.
Some core identifications of the Enneagram One include serious and straightforward during conversations, attuned to practicality and frugality, hardworking and diligent as employees, high internal standards, rigidity in plans and decisions, intense ability to concentrate, natural talent for teaching and instructing. But with this comes the basic fear of the Enneagram One. One's fear being bad people, morally flawed or otherwise seen as imperfect. They cope with this fear by being rigidly disciplined and very hard on themselves and often those around them too. The basic desire of the Enneagram One Enneagram One strive to be good and honorable and to live a life with purpose. They seek to be the best and most correct. They seek to do things in the best, most correct way and manner. The invitation to abundance, the balance of the self of the Enneagram One includes something like this, to live for a higher purpose remembering that it is in your nature to be wise and discerning. You should allow yourself to have more fun. I should allow myself to open up more about my inner world. When will the Enneagram One become present in their life? An Enneagram One might say to themselves something like, I won't become present to my life fully until I have attained complete balance and integrity. Make no mistakes and have everything in my world sensibly organized. When I have achieved perfection, when I have achieved perfection, then I'll show up. The marching orders for the Enneagram One might go something like this. This is something an Enneagram One might say to themselves. You're good or okay if you do what is right. Simple, right? But there's a big contradiction to this. Sounds reasonable. But how do you know what is right? Who says so? Is your set of standards objective or subjective? Where did these ideas come from? Ones struggle to be good, but they are never good enough for their own super egos. That's right. There's such a high standard that some ones have for themselves that they can't even meet their own expectations and standards. And with that can come a lot of problems and a lot of issues. As part of the gut triad, imagine yourself in a scenario where you don't come through, where you don't complete the task, where you leave something left to error, something you overlooked. You might beat yourself up. You might feel tense on the inside. And that's that gut feeling talking to you. That's that gut feeling coming to life. And that's when your shoulders get really high up. And when you get really tense and you tell yourself, why wasn't I good enough? Why couldn't I do what I needed to do? That comes from an upbringing that was, that comes from an upbringing that was perhaps too intense at a young age where you felt like it was your responsibility to come through for your family, to come through for your mom, to come through for your dad. That if you didn't do your best, if you didn't deliver your best, everything was gonna go horrible. I'm here to tell you that is not true. We have to learn to overcome those anxieties and that trauma that we had when we were younger. A healing attitude is something that can really make a difference in the life of an Enneagram One. A healing attitude for the Enneagram One might sound something like this. Maybe others are right. Maybe someone else has a better idea. Maybe others will learn for themselves. Maybe I've done all that can be done. 
It is perfectly okay for me to share my inner world with others I trust and care for. Humans make mistakes and I am a human. So therefore, it's perfectly fine if I mess up or make mistakes here and there. Same goes for other people. Enneagram ones. Known to be the ones that seek to do good and do the right thing to satisfy an urgent need to be virtuous and responsible to avoid fault and blame. This drive provides a defense protection in a world that demands and rewards good behavior and punishes bad behavior. This archetype also exists as the super ego, that part of the psyche that stands in for the parental voice of authority. This internal force exercises its power to tame the excesses born of raw impulses, animal instinct, and unrestricted forms of self-interested self-expression. Type ones are thus the prototype for that part in all of us that strives to match the high standards of good behavior as a way of proving ourselves worthy and avoiding blame and fault. I'm here to tell you that is a helpful way of viewing life, but can also be a very flawed way of looking at life. The type one personality defends against, defends against criticism, real or threatened or imagined, shame and punish them for being wrong or bad. Type one personalities defend against criticism, real or threatened, and shame or punishment for being wrong or bad. Ones often report that they experience pressure early in life to do something well or correct at a time when they were too young to take on the burden of this responsibility. This experience of criticism from parental figures or others creates an anxious sense in the young. One, that there is a right way to do things. Doing the right thing and striving for faultness Performance inspires supportive feedback and positive feelings. Some ones experienced this early responsibility because they lacked structural support or psychological holding in their childhood environment. Chaos or uncertainty or anxiety came when things were not done right. And this creates a sense of anxiety and paranoia if you feel you have to do something, something that might not be done, they're looking, they're looking, they're gonna judge, I'm not worthy. Those instances in your mind and in your head have to do with a time when you were a little girl, a little boy, a little kid, whatever. When you were young, at a time when you weren't ready, when you felt like all the responsibility was on you and on your shoulders, here to tell you, you did an amazing job for being so young and be, being able to do that. I'm here to tell you, you did an amazing job for being so young and being able to do that. It takes a lot of courage and determination, but at the same time, you gotta have that same courage and determination to take it easy on yourself and take it easy sometimes on your loved ones. As an Enneagram one, you have a lot of love and you have a lot of discipline in your life. But don't overdo it on yourself. The beauty in life comes sometimes from spontaneity, from not planning, from just going with the flow, and for sometimes just sharing what you really feel about stuff. Not letting, oh hey, how's this person gonna feel if I share this? Well, if they're your friend, your family member, your loved one, and they care about you, hey, sometimes you gotta share some stuff about you some other people aren't gonna like. They're your friends and family. They got to be cool with it. So I urge you, open up a little more about yourself. If you're an Enneagram one that feels you haven't had the chance to do that. Enneagram ones are great and amazing people. They're really disciplined, but sometimes too disciplined. Don't get lost in being disciplined and keeping the order and structure and planning all the time. Sometimes you got to be a type B person, so to speak. Just chill, mellow out. Don't let stuff have as much 
intensity as it does. And sometimes that comes from a place of anxiety. So with that, I would say, if you feel anxious during certain moments, like you have to do something. Like, oh, hey, my friends are coming over. I have to do this, otherwise I'm a failure. Oh, my parents are coming over. If I don't do this, oh, I'm a failure. They're gonna hate me. Take it easy on yourself. No, they're not gonna hate you. No, it's not gonna be over. It might be a little different, but if you are an adult who grew up like that with a parent that was so strict and demanding over you that you feel now as an adult you can't stand up for yourself, I'm here to tell you you're wrong. You can't stand up for yourself. You just don't have the tenacity or courage to do so yet. I'm here to tell you that I believe in you. I know you can do it. You're part of the body triad. You have that internal gut, the gut feeling of knowing, the gut feeling of taking that drive and inspiration, that same determination that you feel when you feel you have to do something. If you can take that inspiration and drive and apply that to different things, especially, especially in this example, if you can take that drive and determination that you feel with your obligations, if you can make yourself and mellowing out and taking it easy on yourself as the obligation, you'd be amazed how much you can get done. I believe in you, Enneagram Ones. Be the best you that you can be.